friends. Today I want to speak about the spread of metals in human history. Before we knew metals, all weapons and tools are made by materials directly found by nature, wood, stone, horn, bone and antler. With these materials a lot of different useful applications was possible, but it was also important to find the correct stone first. All these materials are only formable by removing some parts. Sometime people find a very shiny stone, a nugget of native metal. A metal only found in native form is gold, because of its inert character. Gold was the first metal discovered and used by people. This metal is soft enough for a easy processing, like hammering with stones. However, gold never was used for tools, more for decoration and jewelry. But this was the first experiences in metal treatment. Copper is another metal that can be found in native forms, but most copper is chemical bounded in ores. Innovations of the Neolithic Revolution was helpful. In this time people in the region between Anatolia and Mesopotamia began to settle. The discovery that clay can be hardened by burning led to the art of ceramic. To really burn it hard, a common wood fire was not hot enough. To heat the embers from typical 800 centigrade it was necessary to put a continuous air stream. One good solution was the chimney to provide the embers with air by its pull. Another often used method was the blowpipe, a method shown in ancient Egypt reliefs. The burning of ceramics is not an easy process, it is necessary to control the temperature very accurately. Otherwise the object could break. The knowledge to get enough heat and control the temperature was important for metal smelting. People was first time able to melt native copper and pour the metal in molds. Later people began to smelt copper by using the copper or malachite. This material was often used for pigments. By a temperature of 230 centigrade the malachite releases carbon dioxide and water by remaining as copper 2 oxide. In the reducing flame of about 800 centigrade copper 2 oxide reduces to copper 1 oxide by releasing oxygen. The wood fire itself produces carbon monoxide, and this toxic gas reduces the copper 1 oxide to elementary copper. Melting slag goes down and the raw copper is ready to use. A very ancient method to make complex objects was pouring in lost mold. In a first step a wax model was formed. The model will be enveloped with clay, with two openings, one for pouring, the other to release the molten wax. When the clay is hard enough, the liquid metal will be poured in the opening, displacing the wax. After cooling down the mold will be destroyed to release the metal object, this is the reason the process is called the lost mold. The period, when the common metals was copper, gold, and silver, is called the Chalcolithic, also known as Copper Age. The metallurgy of copper was invented several times, the oldest tradition is to find in the region between Anatolia and Mesopotamia, where people also started to plant cereals and settled in villages. The second place was in the region of the Great Lakes in North America, and finally the metallurgy of copper was invented in Peru and later in Mexico. It's typical that this happened in regions with rich copper deposits. This is the reason why Africa never had a copper or bronze age.
the Copper Age spread from the Middle East to Europe, Egypt, and Central Asia. It needed about 7,000 years from origin to reach Central Europe. The most famous person of this period is Ötzi. He lived about 3,300 years BC and had a copper axe. Copper was very expansive and this show that Ötzi was a wealthy person. In the same time, in the region of origin new innovations changed everything. This was the beginning of the Bronze Age. Bronze is an alloy of copper with tin or in some cases with arsenic. The problem is that the locations of tin and copper deposits are often far away one from each other. First the tin came from closer regions like Iran or Anatolia, in the later Bronze Age tin from the British Isles was dominant. To smelt tin a similar method like the copper smelting was used, most used mineral was cassiterite. Tin is easy to melt, to trade it standardized ingots was used. Copper was traded in form of pillow formed ingots too. Ingots was used as a kind of currency. Common bronze is made by mixing a part tin and nine parts copper. The alloy of a soft and a softer metal gave a durable and hard material, the bronze. And with the bronze came a new weapon, the sword. Till this time weapons have been altered hunting weapons, but the sword is used for killing people only. This is the mystical aspect of the sword. The spread of the new bronze followed the copper but was much faster. After thousand years the technology reached Central Europe. The sky disk of Nebra in eastern Germany proves the high mobility of the people, by showing Babylonian astronomy. When bronze took over Europe, a new material was used in Anatolia and later in Egypt. The first iron objects are made from iron meteorites, the only source on earth for native iron. Iron objects was extremely rare, like the knife of Tutankhamun. It was really a star metal. But over thousand years passed till the Hittite begun to smelt iron from ores. To smelt iron the temperature of the common furnaces was not enough. To reach such temperatures a new furnace was constructed, called the blooming furnace. This furnace was higher, and the chimney effect was stronger. To increase the temperature bellows was used. It was important to avoid the melting of the iron to get out the useless slag. Forging was the primary method to produce iron objects. Nonetheless the bronze was still dominant, but finally, about 1200 BC, the Bronze Age civilization collapsed. This period is characterized by great migrations, most prominent was the Sea People. After the decline of the Hittite Empire a Dark Age followed, but in this time the whole Europe changed to the new material. In the same time the Iron Age in the south of the Sahara begun. Because of the lack of copper deposits Iron Age followed in Africa directly the Stone Age. The most important people spreading Iron Age in Africa was the Bantu. Iron has several advances. For first the amount of iron ore is much larger than copper or tin ores. This makes it possible to produce tools, weapons, and armors in high quantities. And iron is much harder and firmer than bronze. Later, by adding carbon, the iron was improved to steel. Today metals are still important, for constructions, for electric and electronic applications, and transportation. Additional to the shown metals a high amount of other metals and alloys are used. Every metal has own specifications that leads into their application. In Eurasia we have the typical development from stone to copper, bronze, and finally Iron Age. In Europe and Middle East antiquity followed the Iron Age. Other criteria were relevant now the organization of a civilization. But otherwise we see the metal less high civilization of the Maya and Teotihuacan. What works for Europe is useless in other regions like America, Australia, and Africa. What we find everywhere is the creativity of the people to use their resources. And really the Middle East once took the jackpot, 
tameable animals, cultivable cereals, rich copper deposits, and a temperate climate. The region lost their power in the antiquity, new civilizations in Europe and East Asia took over the lead. In the last century, Europe lost this role to America, and it seems that in future the origin of innovations will move to East Asia. Processes are accelerating, the longest time humans used simple stone tools like the hand axe. We have seen that the spread of every new metal went faster, showing a more networked civilization. Today we are all, with some exceptions, connected with the Internet. New ideas need seconds to reach the whole world, not thousands of years like the knowledge of copper smelting. But what if our civilization collapses? This happened various times, in periods of about 1,600 years. 1,200 BC came the big collapse of the Late Bronze Age, about 400 AD the collapse of the Antiquity, and now, 1,600 years later, we are in the present, with a lot of serious treats. What will we keep after the collapse, does any one of us have enough knowledge? The knowledge of metal smelting? Such things may be important in a post-apocalyptic future. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my channel and be free to leave suggestions for new videos in the comments.